Hey up everybody! Uh, moving on to my next project now and I'm going to make a start of making a tender for the loco that I made in a previous series. Uh, it's a meter made. Um, I've got all the drawings out ready etc. Uh, but before I get on to that I've just finished uh, doing a series on modifying this um, vintage little shaping machine that I've got. If you've not seen that take a look at that and the reason I'm talking about that now is what I've been doing when I'm shaping now I'm getting turnings flying over to the area where my motorbikes are well I made this screen and it does it does stop most of them but you get the odd one you get the the rogue one coming over to where my motorbikes are and I don't want to get a puncture in my tyres yes yeah, so what I've been doing and I've been making this screen that falls back to the draw unit that I've got here and what's going to happen, it's just going to, when I'm doing any shaping work, I can just fold this out. And then it protects my motorbikes from any chips going over to them. And it's also going to double up as a, a board for putting all you, my fellow YouTubers and supporters stickers on. Okay, now let's have a look what I've been doing here. I've been, I've been rooting around all my storage places where I keep everything. And I've dragged out some mild steel, some cast iron, and various other bits and pieces. This brass sheet, which were left over from me, the tanks on my loco. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. So I'll just briefly go through everything. What what's the main components that are needed, and adapting things to suit. So the main components are the two side frames front and rear buffer beams that hold the side frames together axle boxes wheels axles various bits of bracketry and then the main part is the uh, actual water tank that's made in brass so let's deal with the side frames and the buffers the buffer beams I've managed to find some material left over from some other jobs that's going to be adequate to make the side frames and the buffer beams now because this is not critical the sizes that I work to because you never see two sweet P locos or meter maids the same so you probably never see two tenders the same so what I'm doing then, because the material that I've got is approximately one eighth narrower than I actually need on the drawing. So all I'll be doing is adjusting my drawings very very slightly to suit my materials. And that's how I've approached my loco mainly. I shall be adjusting everything on the drawings to make it well to make it work. And it and it's basically going to end up looking You'll, you'll probably never know the difference anyway. I've just emptied this cast iron, bag of cast iron that I've had left over and I've managed to find these four pieces here that's going to make the axle boxes. The wheels, my local club were discarding these old riding car wheels. They're bigger in diameter than I need so when the flanges are off I can make the wheels out of those like I did my loco. I found some uh, angle that just wants cutting down and skimming up for all the bracketry and uh, the horn guides etc. I've got a bit of three quarter bar here for the axles. Moving on to the actual water tank itself that's made in brass. So I've got this piece of brass here left over from my loco tanks. I haven't got quite enough of this so what I've done then I've marked this piece of brass out and I've found out I've got a little bit spare I've got enough for the bottom plate of the tank, the sole plate I've got enough for the two sides I've got enough for the back enough for the front the only thing I'm missing is the top and also again I'll be adjusting the tank drawing because the length of this doesn't quite give me what it says on the drawer and I think I'm a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch shorter than I should be so all I'll do is adjust the drawings to suit 
my material. So that's me, the main part of my tank. And then for the top of the tank, I've got this stainless steel. And I'm going to make stainless steel covers for the top. They made so that you can take the top off for cleaning the, the actual tender out. And I think that's it really. I think that's basically all my materials that I've... Uh, that you can see here in front and you will basically make this uh, this tender the only thing I'm perhaps missing is things like the actual sprung buffers uh, some various bits of brackets etc some pipe uh, and I'll have that lying around somewhere so what I'm going to do then I'm going to I shan't be rushing this job like I rush my loco uh, so don't expect uh, you know videos being churned out like I did on my loco uh, this is just going to be a a steady project uh, so we'll just play it by ear really well that's it then I've got all my materials sorted I've just got to do a, a few minor adjustments to the drawings and for anybody that's working on a budget uh, that's the way to get round it make your materials suit the drawings I mean obviously if it matters on the drawings you've got to have the right materials but the places where it doesn't matter you can just adjust everything to suit and my minor adjustments are not going to make hardly any difference at all to that tender when it's finished you'll probably never even know so uh, also if, if you're just tuning into to my channel and you've not seen me making me uh, me meter made loco which I've built from scratch. Uh, take a look back, take a look back at that series and, uh, and catch up on that, and you'll you'll see exactly where you know where I'm up to now. The only other thing I want to say is uh, now I've got this petition made for my shaper. Uh, I'm going to put put these stickers everybody sends on this petition. So if you want to uh, do a swap, just give me an email. My, my email address is on my about page and if you can't find that just give me a just just give me a quick comment so uh, i'll sign off for now then thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next part of this bye for now then